Very briefly about a, a different issue and, and a, a tough to follow, follow the union folks, and I don't want to um, take away from, from the importance of their, of their testimony. Jared normally would be here today. He's actually sitting for the bar today, so we're sending him some, some good vibes, um, and I'm, I'm glad to see you all. Uh, it's been a few months. I, hopefully you all have a, a packet of written testimony um, that I passed out. We do. Okay. And, there's, and there should be a couple of copies for uh, general manager and general counsel as well. Um, I'm not going to go over the entire testimony. I'm hoping that you all read it at your leisure and that general counsel and, and Neil and staff will read it. It lays out really our position regarding ordinance number 332 in terms of extending transfer times. I think, you know, we were, we were the ones who were really frustrated and disappointed that the board kind of conflated the Title VI administrative complaint issue and the, and the ordinance, the handling of the ordinance. They really are two separate issues. You know, we've laid out what we think is a really clear analysis. We care about this issue so much. We've been working on it for four years. Um, we have a lot of expertise around Title VI, and I, I don't think that the way in which the board responded in January is, is defensible. I don't think it's warranted, particularly given the fact that we spent about five months trying to communicate with the board and with staff about this very topic. So there shouldn't be any surprise. There's no call for surprise. Um, in, this, in these materials, I've attached the board meeting minutes from the November 13th or November 11th uh, um, board meeting where the issue was explicitly addressed and dismissed by the board and by staff. And then a, a very simple email correspondence between myself and hope what I intended to be Mr. McFarland but ended up being Mr. Bell attempting to get a meeting in early December about this to try one last time to resolve this informally before we had the deadline to file this thing. It was clearly transparently communicated. I think the, the messages that we're hearing that riders are experiencing is also confusion and a lack of communication with the board and a lack of clarity and a lack of trust because we, th we can't seem to get a straight answer either. These are really two separate issues. What we've done is we've laid out what we think is actually your best course of action. We think there's a very clear path forward on ordinance number 332 that you can take that is fully compliant with federal law and actually helps you resolve this issue and turn the page on the issue in a way that is, is acceptable for everybody. It's a win-win-win for, for the riders, for management, and for, and for the public. And we're, we're really hopeful that you'll take you know, this, these suggestions, this, this advice to heed, that you'll discuss it with staff, that we, we remain open to uh, talking about this over the next several weeks. We're going to be back with our partners, with our members in force at the end of March and a, mo a month from now and we're hoping to see some movement on this issue because there's just no defensible reason why it should be held up any longer. Um, and we remain very open to working out a negotiated solution. We don't need to let this stuff linger like it's, like it's been. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll get a response from you. Thank you.